Ursula de Castro, I'm founder of From Somewhere, which I started in 1997, curator of Aesthetica, which I started in 2006 for the British Fashion Council. I am also a mother of four, a grandmother of one, sorry, Mint. And um, I am not formally trained in fashion. In fact, my training is in printmaking and fine art. Um, however, at some point in 1997, I had a jumper, and this jumper was full of holes. From my Venetian grandmother, I've inherited a rather nifty capacity to crochet, so I took to my crochet needle, and I started going around every single defect of the jumper, effectively bringing it back from death to life through a creative process, which in a nutshell is how I see upcycling. It so happened that at that time, my printed textiles were selling in a very trendy boutique in London. They saw the jumper, they ordered the full collection, and within three months, there I was in the fashion industry. I was basically customizing anything that I could get my hands on. So again, I went from my local charity shop to you know, my friend's own bins and wardrobes to visiting enormous warehouses in Italy to deal with buying more and more product because I went from literally two stockists to about 60 internationally in maybe less than a year. So through a collaboration with Jigsaw, which I started in 1998 and continued until 2001, I became aware of pre-consumer waste. Um, Jigsaw was the first company in London to buy in bulk our own label and introduce it in their own flagship stores. And then they started sending us leftovers, entire runs of leftovers from their factories in Hong Kong, or perhaps unsold jumpers from their shops in London. So we started customizing in bulk. And I realized that however much the consumer discards, the industry discards probably an awful lot more. Um, so my entry into pre-consumer waste came by pleading to various companies in the north of Italy if they could please um, just show me their rubbish bins. And um, of course that was met with that, laughter. But equally, you know, at the time, eco-sustainable fashion, recycling, upcycling, all these words that we give completely for granted now didn't exist. So I was simply a batty lady that wanted to look at their rubbish, which was brilliant because I was the only one. And the rubbish that I'm talking about is really, really high end, you know, so from some of the top designers in the world. So I continued on this upcycling road. Now, Upcycling is actually a term that was first coined by Rainer Pils in 1994. And he said, recycling, I call it downcycling. They smash bricks, they smash everything. What we need is upcycling, where old products are given more value, not less. The term was then rendered much more famous in the 2002 Rethinking the Way We Make Things by Michael Braungart and William McDonough. It's a very, very new word, but in a nutshell, for me, what it says is this is a design solution to an environmental challenge. Does upcycling and recycling stand for the reduction in landfill mass and its associated emission burden, as well as the slowing down of virgin textile production, which, as you can imagine, at a time of overproduction as we are now, we really do need to slow down, particularly considering that the textile industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. The World Bank estimates that almost 20% of global industrial water pollution comes directly from the dyeing and treating of textiles. So recycling is relatively, or what pills called downcycling, is relatively effective in the fashion industry. It's not as widespread as it used to be. There was a whole town in Italy devoted entirely to the recycling of the local Italian industry. It is now nevertheless on the increase. We're seeing anyone from Esprit to Levi's really looking towards recycling their own textile waste. However, as a process, recycling does involve an enormous amount of transport, is very energy consuming, water consuming, 
It implies chemical usage. Most of the recycling that we're talking about is either making inferior quality yarns or is used for things such as mattress filling, car insulation, and in particular, wet wipes. So you can imagine the amount of bleaching that this process involves. Upcycling, on the other hand, has this immediacy whereby it is design-led first. Just remember that it takes 2,720 liters of water to make one T-shirt. Now, if you were to wear one T-shirt that was made with recycled yarns, you would be saving up 75% of water for that. So it is widely estimated on top of it all that 80% of all that we discard and that is landfilled is reusable. And let's not even speak about what's produced by the textile mills where hundreds of thousands of rolls of fabrics can be discarded just for being the wrong shade. This is part of our collection for Tesco clothing which we launched in 2010. Now as part of this collection we went to Sri Lanka where Tesco were producing most of their collections and we worked using all their obsolete and discarded stock. We started only with theirs, and then we continued with other designers' obsolete stock. The collection was made in a factory, the Green Factory in Sri Lanka, and it was a, a bestseller. It sold out within two weeks. And this is the famous Oscar dress that Livia was wearing. Just worth noting that the stuff that she's wearing on her shoulder, that's all underwear. Admittedly, the most beautiful, unfinished Italian underwear, but that is all it was. And this is the Reclaim to Wear collection with Topshop. The first collection was produced in Turkey using liability stock, and it launched in 2012. The second collection was much, much bigger and was produced in the UK using exclusively way an end of roll from their boutique collections, which had been going on for 10 years. This collection debuted in Hong Kong, went on to New York and London. It, it opened in 2013 in June, and again, it sold out within days. And this is the gown that we made with Speedo um, for the Olympic. Now, for this, we really, really used rubbish waste. This is all their proofs and experiments from their textile mills in Portugal. So this stuff is really chucked away by the gallon because, as you can imagine, they were making all of the Olympic uniforms. So they were trying stretchability, color fastening, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and who else? Well, I mean, you know, this briefly and interrupted my experience. As mentioned before, I am curator of Aesthetica, which we started in 2006. Over the years, we have supported 150, more than 150 designers, many of whom are upcyclists. So there is a real move towards this new technique and aesthetic. Most notably, I would like to point out Christopher Rayburn. This particular collection was made upcycling parachute silk. Christopher went on to win the emerging menswear designer at the British Fashion Awards in 2011. And this is another brand that we launched at Aesthetica called Veja. And they produce wonderful accessories in the UK using primarily fire hose. And this would be the father of all modern upcycling. I'd say this is Martin Margiela. Now, this, despite the company having been bought by diesel, and therefore we're talking big numbers, this is a recent collection. This is 2010. What, what interests me about this is that despite fast fashion, someone like Renzo Rosso and a big group is holding fast to the aesthetics of upcycling. And this is what I'm discovering more and more, is that sometimes in order to go forward, you need to look back. And upcycling may be a new word, but recycling is as embedded in our culture as anything, really. So I found it back in Boro fabric. This is in, in 18th century Japan. In fact, the older the fabric, the more precious the cloth was. Entire generations would take years to sew these pieces of fabric. And what's, I think, what's very, very poetic is that this is patchwork with a purpose. It's not just practical, it is poetic. It is telling an ancient tradition and passing it through the generations.
we see it even more again. This is quilting, you know. This is an aesthetic of fragmentation. It's for the love of all things small, where each square is perfect and therefore has a value. And this is another upcycling story and aesthetic. It's the appreciation of something mended over something new. So this aesthetic is completely pertinent to the culture that surrounds us right now never more so than punk, you know. We are looking at a time when people preceded trends. I mean, the punks didn't wake up one morning, go down to H&M to buy themselves skinny jeans. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> they took in the flared ones from their own cupboards. So, again, it's another change. These days and days, we'll find that it is actually the industry that will precede and dictate, in many cases, the trend. So. It is no wonder that young designers are embracing upcycling. Not only does it come instinctive, but they have so many references, cultural references to inspire them. Um, we can see this is a very young upcyclist called Lyura LaSalle who was supported in Aesthetica, but there are huge brands beginning to happen. There is a massive brand called Reformation in the US using only pre-consumer waste. There is upcycling in Korea, believe it or not, with a rather large company called Recode. So, basically, upcycling, which is as old as man, somehow lends itself to become a vehicle for innovation. And this is what designers, I think, are bringing into the picture. It is estimated that 80 billion items of clothing are delivered out of factories annually worldwide. China alone exports an estimated 20 billion finished garment a year, more than three pieces of clothing for every person on earth a year. And this is what leaves the factory intact to leave the shops. I've been talking to you about the rubbish that never leaves the factory because it's broken and damaged and it's thrown away. So if this is what leaves the shop, imagine quite how much never does. So inevitably we are looking at big companies having to do something about this over waste because they've been the one over producing. So we have several examples of it permeating larger companies and the high street. This is Eileen Fisher, who has a give back um, project in America. And this is upcycling, straight upcycling. Therefore, she will then work with young designers to turn unwanted Eileen Fisher clothes into either a range of homeware or babywear. With this in mind, I believe that it really is only a matter of time before the industry starts embracing upcycling in an upscaled way and more widely throughout the supply chain. I think it's important, however difficult it is right now, and it is, I think it's important to remember that 20 years ago, factories in Sri Lanka, in Bangladesh, and in India were only producing clothes. Nowadays, they all have their own design studio and sampling unit. So, really, upscaled upcycling, integrated within regular production, could become a cost-efficient and time-efficient way to reintroduce waste, to actually start looking at waste before it becomes rubbish, and to redress the balance between consumption and disposal. I'm going to quickly finish with a quote, which is from the father of modern chemistry, Antoine de Lavoisier, and he said that in nature, nothing is created and nothing is destroyed, but everything is transformed. And now, if you allow me one more second, I'm sorry I've been very long, but if there is a way that all of you would like to get involved, this is Fashion Revolution Day, which will be on the 24th of April, and in memory of Rana Plaza, but not really, mostly as a way to celebrate people that are doing something to make the fashion industry and the supply chain more sustainable. Please keep an eye on Facebook, Twitter, and turn your clothes inside out. That's the question that we are asking. Who made your clothes? Become more curious, find out, and do something about it. Thank you.